So maybe some of you have, have had the opportunity to go to St. Peter's <coughs> in the Vatican. Uh, it's, it's, when I was there as a seminarian, obviously not in St. Peter's, when I was in Rome as a seminarian, I remember quite often seeing huge queues uh, coming right around the, the colonnade uh, of people waiting to get into St. Peter's. And it is, it's, it's incredible. It's incredible. Often how, no matter how often you go there, there are, there's just so much detail. There's so much beauty. Uh, and, you know, if you just, you just look at the floor, right, you could spend a day just looking at the floor. You could spend a week looking at everything from here down. Then you could, you know, the mosaics are just phenomenal. And then it goes the whole way up. And then there's the excavation tour underneath it. Uh, it's like there's, there's just so much there. And it's beautiful. And it's, it's, uh, it's, Obviously, at the end of the day, it's only a building, but we should give God the best we can. Uh, and it is, it's, 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 it's an astounding place. Now, interestingly, uh, they started building St. Peter's in 1506, 1506. And it was completed in 1626, 120 years later. It took 120 years to build it. Which means that the architects and the builders and the masons who started building it never saw it completed. The guys who designed it never saw it finished. Actually, even the guys halfway through the job didn't see it completed. So you'd imagine, like, you know, if you're doing something and you're not going to see it completed, actually, you can just do a bit of a, a bit of a, a light job, no detail, come on, at the end of the day, sure, look, this will this be, no one will remember me, you know, Giovanni Rossi, the guy who carved that bird's beak, sure, who's going to remember you? Like, your name, is, your name isn't in, you know, on the plaque underneath, so why bother? But this wasn't the attitude. Uh, every single person put such great detail and effort into what they did because they knew that they were the, the foundational block for what was going on top of it, right? So everyone has to do their bit so that the fella after you can do his bit right. You do your bit right, the next fella can do his bit right. right? The fella's laying the foundations, make a mess of it, that rather tall building is going to have a mighty short life. So uh, everyone has to do their bit right. And then voila, after 120 years, it's completed. And even if you look at if you, if you Google it, there's, there's a list of architects uh, because yeah, they, they had to be changed, not that they had to be changed, they, um, they died. <laughs> you know, so let's get a new one, you know? So um, just very, very interesting. As regards our faith, Building on something that you may not see completed. Building on something that you may not see completed. And there's a, there's, there's, there is a desire, and it's a very human desire, and it's a very natural and normal desire to see the fruit of our labors and to see the fruit of our prayer now. You know, it's, it's understandable. You know, uh, in most jobs, in many things that we do, uh, cleaning a floor, for example, right? There's floors mank. 15 fillers are after walking through with football boots on. You clean it up and voila, floors back to pristine new conditions. And you get this, this satisfied feeling, you know, of a job complete. Check that out. Okay, I did that. Uh, and it's, it's satisfying to do a job well. Uh, but if you're investing in something which you may not see completed, that takes a whole lot more faith. Because will you put in the same amount of effort? Would you really care as much? Or does it really matter? You're not going to see it anyway. And this is where our first reading today kicks off, uh, speaking about Abraham and Sarah. So Abraham promised that he would be the father of a multitude, the father of a nation. But he's old, and his wife is past childbearing years, so how's that going to happen? And then even when he has a son, he's called to offer him up. How, hang on. I'm going to be the father of a multitude. I have one child so far with my wife. Ishmael as well, but one child with my, with my wife, and I'm going to have to offer him up. I'm not doubting you, God, but just there's, there's some logistical issues here. How on earth am I going to have offspring through my son if I'm going to be dead soon, my wife can't have any more children, and my only son will be offered up? But Lord, if you say so, I mean, phenomenal faith phenomenal faith so what about us are we willing to invest time and effort and prayer not so much in the building up of buildings because 
Buildings come and go. But the building up of, of the church as a family, the building up of your domestic church. For all of you at home, maybe you have sons and daughters who, who aren't practicing. And I, I often meet parents who are we've getting emails all the time from people who are just very, very disappointed uh, that their, their children aren't practicing. Their children haven't, maybe, maybe they're not even baptizing their children anymore. And so it can be very difficult, like, uh, very disappointing, very saddening. Something that you hold so dear, like, you've set that block, hopefully, but will, will they build on top? And it's very difficult. It's very difficult to walk by faith. But do we, do we give up? Will we give up? Or will we keep going? Knowing that, as the Lord tells us uh, through the, the psalm, if the Lord does not build the house, in vain do the laborers toil. If the Lord does not watch over the city, in vain does the watchman keep vigil. Ultimately, it's the Lord who builds the church. Ultimately, it's the Lord who converts hearts. Ultimately, it's the Lord who wants your son and daughter's salvation even more than you. So we keep building. We keep chipping away, doing the best we can with the portion of the church entrusted to me while I'm here. And then if it's unfinished, by the time I'm called to go somewhere else, I'll pass it on to the next guy and leave it to him in faith. That's, that's our job. That's what we do. We don't fix everything ourselves. It's the Lord's church. But we have to do our bit. We have to do our bit so that the next person can do theirs. So do your bit. The Lord sees it. The Lord sees you chipping away at that little block of stone, forming a, a hand. You know, the Lord, the Lord sees all your work. The Lord sees it all. One last thing, if I may. Uh, our reading speaks about faith. The whole theme of today is faith. Jesus is asleep in the boat and uh, asleep in a storm. Asleep in a storm when waves are crashing into the boat. He, he must have been proper wrecked, in fairness, uh, but uh, kind of reminds me of someone who might have slept in front of the stove last night. But anyway, um, yeah, so there you are in the boat with Jesus, and Jesus is asleep, and they say to him, they, they rebuke him, Master, do you not care? We're going down. And he woke up, rebuked the wind and the sea, quiet now, be calm, and the wind dropped, and all was calm again, and he said to them, why are you so frightened? How is it that you have no faith? I'm here. I'm here. Jesus is with them. So yes, it may be stormy, and I think any of us with eyes in our heads can see that it's quite stormy out there at the moment in the church. There's a lot of confusion, a lot of division, a lot of uh, tension. So it's, we're, we're in the middle of a storm. But the Lord is with us. So we must not give up faith. And faith isn't our own invention, nor is it, is it just a, a, for our own comfort. We've mentioned this before, I'll just mention it briefly. But Faith is the ascent of the intellect and the will to God's self-revelation. So God, God reveals himself. This isn't, so it's not human. Faith isn't the result of human thought or reflection. God reveals himself, and then he asks us, using your brain, your intellect, okay, to try and understand him, but then also your will to obey him. Your intellect, uh, try and understand what God is saying, what God is asking of you. Please do, please study, please reflect on these things. Don't just say, well, sure, look, I'll see what I think about myself. I mean, we have 2,000 years of, 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 of saints and theologians reflecting on this. We have a catechism. We have so many of the answers already given to us. But then we must ascend with our, with our will. I know these things. Okay, now I choose to do them for the building up of your kingdom. And so we ask the Lord today to renew our faith that even though things in our own church, in our own family, in our own parish uh, may be stormy, the way forward may, may be somewhat unclear, that you, Lord, have a plan, that you, Lord, of all things, in your hand and all you ask of us today is to walk by faith amen